Welcome back. Yesterday, balmy. Today, not so balmy. What's going on, Adam? I don't love this. I really don't love it. <laughs> uh, that's been the norm here throughout the winter, the big freeze-thaw cycles, especially through the month of January. And we're kicking off February with some colder air. We are going to warm up a little bit as we get into the weekend, but that comes with a little bit of a price as well in the terms of some snow. Minus 13, the current reading. It's minus mid-20s for areas up toward the north. And when we take a look at how things are going to play out over the next bit, you're going to see temperatures during the day today remaining cold. I think we'll get up to about minus nine for the high temperature and then throughout the overnight dipping back down close to that minus 12 mark. Slightly warmer as we go into the day on Saturday as those temperatures rise a little bit with a shift in the wind and that's going to drive the lake effect snow squalls back up toward the Bruce Peninsula into portions of cottage country. The plan here during the day today is going to be dry conditions, but as we get Saturday night into Sunday here in the city, we're expecting more snow to return. About 48 centimeters of snow expected. Looks like it's going to be light snow through a good chunk of the day there on Sunday. When you talk about the seven-day forecast, a uh, little up, a little down, a little up, a little down. That's basically going to be the case, but uh, definitely going to be a cold one today. Minus 23 in the morning hours. Minus 17 is what we're looking at wind chill wise into the afternoon. Then there's that snow, as I mentioned, on Sunday. Drier conditions Monday into Tuesday. Another chance of snow on Wednesday. Another shot of colder air arriving on Thursday. That's your forecast. Here's a check on the roads. All right. Well, we do have problems in town at uh, Bloor and Ossington. There's been a broken water main. Expect lane restrictions at that intersection. Uh, looks like they still have all eastbound and southbound traffic shut down. A lot of work to do there. You can see those crews digging away. So that is a pretty busy intersection. You got the uh, subway station there as well. So avoid that area. But uh, northbound traffic, westbound, still able to get through. So it's just the eastbound and southbound lanes that are closed for those broken water main repairs. Uh, as for the major routes right now, we just had problems clear away on the eastbound 401 at Kipling. So delays are improving, but still a slow go uh, as you head towards the 427 over to Kipling. And uh, westbound 401, that is looking pretty good across the city. We're just starting to see those delays build as you head across Scarborough, but still a pretty quiet drive on the Don Valley Parkway and the gardener. So just drive safely today. That's it for traffic. Back to you, Tammy. A woman is in hospital and in police custody this morning after a crash in King City. The SIU is now investigating. The single vehicle crash happened at around 10 o'clock last night near King Road just east of Dufferin. A woman in her 40s has been taken to hospital with serious injuries. Police confirm that she is also in custody. Alcohol is being considered a factor in the crash, but it's still not clear why the SIU is investigating. Two people have now jumped into the race for the PC leadership, and word is it's about to be three. Former Whitby Oshawa MPP Christine Elliott has entered the fray. She's twice run for the leadership, but lost last time to Patrick Brown. But she's hoping it's third time the charm and tweeting out a simple, I'm in yesterday to announce her candidacy. Now, she joins the only other declared candidate, former Toronto councillor Doug Ford. A third contender is reportedly about to join the race. PC candidate Carolyn Mulrooney, daughter of former PM Brian Mulrooney. And in Ottawa, a federal New Democrat finds himself suspended from caucus right now while the party investigates harassment claims. The claims are against Saskatchewan MP Aaron Weir. However, it's not being called sexual harassment allegations, and the claims come from a third party, a New Democrat MP who's got the alleged, who's not the alleged victim, rather. Weir says, as politicians, we are placed in a position of public trust. We are and should be held to the highest possible standards and it is absolutely right that our party has a process to investigate any allegations of harassment. However, I do not know what is being alleged. I am confident that I have not harassed anyone and welcome a prompt investigation to clear my name. An outside investigator is looking into the harassment claims. Toronto police keeping a Leaside home under 24-hour guard in their investigation of alleged serial killer Bruce MacArthur. The homeowner is allowed to make a brief visit to collect some personal belongings. 
Yesterday was the first time in two weeks that the homeowners were allowed back into the house on Mallory Crescent. Police say they have recovered planters from the property that contain the remains of at least three people and are still working to identify those remains. They've also erected a tent in the property and are thawing the ground so that forensic anthropologists can slowly dig out the backyard for any possible evidence. Now, Bruce MacArthur had stored his landscaping equipment at the home. The 66-year-old faces five first-degree murder charges. It's in the deaths of Andrew Kinsman, Salim Essen, Majid Kayan, Sarush Mahmoudi, and Dean Lisowick. Police suspect there may be more victims. His next court appearance, February 14th. City Council voting to move forward on converting Old City Hall to a museum and bringing the FIFA World Cup to Toronto. Yesterday, Council voted 29 to 1 to be part of a North American bid to co-host the 2026 FIFA World Cup. But that's if funding is provided by the federal and provincial governments. And councillors also voted overwhelmingly in favour of turning Old City Hall into a museum of Toronto. Right now it houses courtrooms. The building would also house a museum, gift shop, library, as well as a wedding chapel, a cafe or restaurant, and space to be rented out. After two days of major delays on the subway, Mayor John Tory says the problems were unacceptable and the TTC has to do a better job communicating to riders when they happen. Uh, things happened in the last couple of days that were inconsistent with, I think, the patterns that had been set in more recent years to communicate these things better and more effectively to the people who are affected. It's also when they're actually in the system, on the trains, on the platforms, uh, and some of what happened was just a mystery to me. Tory says he's confident the TTC can get back onto the path to improving customer service to on a day-to-day -day basis. And on Tuesday, several different platforms uh, were jam-packed with riders. And on Wednesday, a rail cracked at Bloor Station, and trains had to travel slowly through the station, causing delays throughout the day. Now, just to note this morning, the TTC executives are expected to be at Young Bloor Station to greet passengers and to answer any questions or concerns that they have. And this weekend, on the TTC, there will be no subway service on Line 1 between St. Clair West and Union Stations. That's due to signal upgrades. Shuttle buses will operate between St. Clair West and Spadina Stations, but will only stop at DuPont Station. And there, will be no, there won't be any shuttle service south of Bloor. So the subway stations that will be closed include DuPont, Museum, Queens Park, St. Patrick, Osgood, and St. Andrew.